Hi guys, welcome to the Fort Daily Demos. Uh, today I'm going to teach you how to uh, build staircases uh, or understand staircase math and how to apply that to a perspective drawing in a very believable way. Um, all too often I see a lot of videos in which uh, we have a little bit of a kind of an abstraction of staircases and it's very difficult to get past say five or six steps in the system. So this is a process and a method that I've learned over the years and um, I teach to my students and hopefully it'll help you get uh, going as well. Um, a few things to what I did is here is I created a, a little matrix of a few sketches that I've created over the years or over semesters and things. Um, and it's very important to understand that stairs look differently going in different directions in your perspective. So um, I'm going to teach you a system that you can apply to any of these scenarios um, and hopefully that will help you. But you have, you have to uh, kind of realize that a one-point perspective is going to be a little bit different than a two-point perspective and so on and so forth. A uh, one-point perspective where the staircase is sort of parallel to the back plane of the room is going to come up uh, square to the back or square to the horizon line. That's going to be a very different look in the staircase than a staircase that's going up and away from us. And down here I have a perspective of a staircase that's kind of rising up over our head to our over our right shoulder. Um, similar in two-point perspective, we can have staircases that rise up and to the left or rise up to the right uh, away from us. Um, and then this is a zoom in of that same kind of scenario and this is a zoom in of that same scenario off to the right and up. Uh, we can also wrap staircases up and then also down, so we're actually covering three level changes. There's a level down below, the level that we're standing on here, and a level up above. And what I don't have shown here is we can also have staircases that, I'll show a couple scenarios here, um, stairs that wrap around in some other directions as well. So. Uh, here's a loft or a landing. We go up one, two, three, four steps, five steps to the landing, and we continue on up to the loft up above. So, no matter which direction your staircase goes, in this case we are um, down here on this ground level, go up the stairs, there's a loft level, and then I've suggested that the staircase continues up above over our head. Um, so stairs can keep wrapping. You don't have to be stuck with um, just one level change. But this system is going to require a few things from us, okay? So, we are going to need to know, I've tried to make a little outline here. We're going to need some, to know some things. We're going to need to know staircase terms and definitions uh, and, and rough dimensions of stairs. We're also going to need to understand the concept of sloped planes in perspective. If you are just starting out, staircases are not uh, for beginners, okay? This is definitely intermediate to advanced perspective drawing. Um, but you need to understand the concept of slope planes, and I'm going to diagram that a little bit on this background sheet with some trace paper for you very quickly. So that as we get started in this one version, you'll see that it applies to all the others as well. Um, and we're also going to need to understand a, system, a, a concept in perspective drawing uh, called division system. And this is a drawing and perspective staircase is a great application of division system. Um, but once you understand this concept of division system, you can actually use this even in a wood shop and you can use this on site in construction. Um, I believe I used, I learned this in high school from my father, this division system, and then later it came back through by way of drawing. Uh, so it's actually a very, um, a really practical way of dividing up a line. And we're gonna apply it here today in building staircases. Um, Staircase terms and definitions. One thing you need to know is the horizontal plane of a stair step is called a tread. Typically in America, these could be as short as about 10 inches. It could be a little bit shorter even on a, on a residential property prop, perhaps. Um, but they're very typically between 10 and 11 inches. You don't have to be overly precise about how long your stair tread and rises with your, when it comes to a perspective drawing like this. We're not trying to compete with SketchUp or, or AutoCAD or any other 3D modeling program. But just for a concept drawing, as long as you have a rough idea of, of this range, you'll be in good shape. Likewise, the rise of each individual step, uh, or sometimes known as the riser in uh, staircase construction, the riser, 
Uh, typically we want to go as little as seven inches. You could go a little bit lower for some really low steps, um, but typically seven to eight and a half inches or so. You start getting taller than an eight and a half inch step, you wind up having a very, uh, very steep rise to run ratio. Now we do have code in America that we have to deal with. Um, commercial properties have uh, different rise to run ratios and in uh, residential than from residential projects. So um, anyway, this is some rough numbers to get our drawing underway. So we're going to need to know the total rise. We're going to need to know the total r uh, run length of our staircase. And we're going to want to understand the concept of a slope. Okay. So jumping over here to slope, I'm going to use a piece of trace paper. I'm going to use a Sharpie here. Just sketching over the top of this, I just want you to see that the staircase in this center sketch goes up like this. And what we have is the slope converges. And in fact, if we follow the horizon line out here, and we follow the perspective, there's a vanishing point up above here, uh, above the native vanishing point in the drawing. Okay, So all of these diagrams that I have sketched out here uh, utilize that same system, that same method. In the one point perspective over here, we have a vanishing point in the center of the scene. The slope rises up and the slope geometry goes to a vanishing point right above the native uh, vanishing point in the system. Okay, Really important concept. So we have a vanishing point and we have a slope VP as well. All right. Now in this scenario in the top left corner, I know these are very small, they're very diagrammatic. In this case, since the staircase is sort of parallel to our picture plane, the slope of the, par of the staircase is actually parallel. So the handrail is also going to be parallel. So these are all parallel in this case. The depth of the staircase then goes back towards the native vanishing point. So the loft up above is going to that vanishing point, the stairs are going to that vanishing point, and then the stair rises cut through that system like that. Okay, so that's a couple quick diagrams. I'm going to draw another quick diagram right here. Um, just a simple box concept. Let me put some paper under that so you can see it. All right, so simple box. If we um, understand our perspective pretty well and you build enough grids, if you start to construct some boxes and cubes and things like that, one thing you will observe if you bisect corner to corner here and bisect corner to corner on the opposite side of the cube and it's a well-crafted cube you are going to discover that the slope of the plane is going to converge to the vanishing point above the left vanishing point in this case. I'm going to diagram that same thing in the opposite direction but using red this time just to help you see it. So in the opposite direction if we were to slice this cube in this direction and this direction we're going to get a slope vanishing point literally above our native right vanishing point. Okay, So diagrammatically, what this looks like in our system, what this looks like in our system is if we have our horizon line and our vanishing points and we come out in space in this direction, for example. If we want to build a slope on this box, uh, going up and away from us, we're going to have a slope vanishing point up here above the left vanishing point. So I, if I sketch that line right there and that line, that's the slope of a, um, say, a staircase in this direction. Or a, just a wedged shaped box. Okay? So this is a really important concept. We should be able to uh, get our, our mechanics. This is a very important concept because the stairs are going to then flood in and fill in that, that sloped uh, wedge. All right. So if we are building staircases that drop down and away from our eye or rise up over our head, the concept is all exactly the same. I'm going to do this one in red. The principal concept is the same. I'm going to do this one in red. So now I'm starting with a plane that's maybe up here in space. Let's start with it from right here. And now if I have a staircase that's rising up over my shoulder, there's a slope vanishing point down below the right vanishing point down here somewhere. So 
So this staircase would evolve outward in space, sort of like that. So my steps are going to drop down vertically. I'm just quickly sketching this diagrammatically for you. And then the whole, each tread is going to come back to that vanishing point, to the right vanishing point. And you can see I'm kind of preparing the line very quickly, okay? And what a lot of times we don't want to trust is that by the time we're way up here, this in fact is parallel to the ground plane. And these go off to this right vanishing point, the stair tread edges. All right, so that's a couple quick diagrams. And now I'm going to put that into play in the perspective system. All right. I'm going to put that off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and take this off of the drawing sheet. I'm going to get started today with a drawing that's already been started in Trace, or on Trace, um, in like Graphite. And I've got my right vanishing point here in the scene for you. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. And my left vanishing point is off the sheet, um, off the drawing um, table, drawing board. So I apologize for that. But I do... I'll keep calling it out whenever I'm using the left vanishing point as I build this, this drawing. All right. All right. When you're first learning this, do not try to, you know, uh, construct a perfect drawing in the first pass. I'm always saying, you know, you're just doing a draft. You're just learning the system. Uh, it's just about the mechanics and understanding those mechanics initially. Okay. So let's do a little bit of. A little bit of staircase math, we're going to need that. So here's a perspective drawing. In the back corner of the room is uh, this edge right here. Let me draw this in red a little bit for you so you can start to see some of the mechanics here. Uh, the back corner of the room is here. And that is a measurable line based on my floor plan. And my floor plan in this case happened to be one eighth inch scale. I happen to have that up above in the drawing, you can't see it. Um, it's an eighth inch scale drawing, so I'm using a five foot eye level, and what that means is a figure in space, and you can use just really generic diagrammatic figures just to get an idea of placement and location, but eyes always go through the horizon line in this case uh, for five foot eye level, and this figure would be standing on the ground perhaps here, right? And a person farther away, again, we'll just draw a vertical line if they're standing outside this building, or this interior space, they're farther away, the feet are coming up towards the horizon line, okay? Really core principle concept that students make errors on all the time. All right, so the back edge of the room, this is five feet, I happen to know that. Um, if I take my, my architectural scale or a ruler and I double that dimension, so this is the floor on the back of the room, that happens to be five eighths of an inch, so if I add another 5 eighths of an inch to that, that would be 10 feet. Another eighth of an inch would be 11 feet. Another eighth of an inch would be 12 feet. So I can make little marks on that back edge and that is measurable. I know that's very difficult to see in the video. You may have to zoom in or project this onto a larger screen, uh, hopefully. So this would be 10 feet, 11 feet, and 12 feet, okay? So one thing I might want to do is start to think about where do I want to place this staircase in this in this environment, in this room. I also happen to know that I need, I have some dimensions in here on my floor plan to, for reference, but I happen to know from the front of this column all the way to the back wall is 17 feet from the back wall. And it's about 14 and a half feet to the back of this column. And the space between the column and the wall is about six feet, three inches. So I know half of that dimension is about three feet, right? So as a reference. So if I wanted to build a staircase over here, against this wall, um, and I want to make it half of that dimension, that's three feet wide, I could build that staircase going back. One thing I need to know is I need to locate where the, the second floor is going to be in this space. 
I'm going to switch to a different color just to start to help you guys see this stuff from home. I know it gets complicated. Um, we're going to need to know how high our floor level is that we're going to. In other words, where's the second floor? So in this case, again, that's 10 feet, 11 feet. Let's assume that we're going to use an 11 foot floor level and we'll use one foot thickness for that ceiling to floor height, okay? One foot is probably not thick enough, truthfully. It's not tall enough. Probably would be more like 18 inches to 24 inches, but for the purpose of this drawing, we'll just do that. So there's 10, uh, sorry, 10, 11, 12. I'm gonna note this. 10, 11, and 12 feet on that back edge. And there's five foot eye level, and the floor is at zero feet. Okay, so I'm going to come out from the 11 foot mark out along the wall off of the right vanishing point forward a little bit and I'm going to eyeball where I think that loft level is going to be. I'm just going to sketch it in right there and over here off of the left vanishing point coming into my scene here I'm going to bring a floor plate up there. So the, that's where the, le the loft level is going to be, in other words the floor. I'm, remember, I'm trying to get from one floor to another floor. I'm trying to get from this floor to a loft level up here, okay? And in this case, we're doing 11 foot floor level change. So that's a very important number you need to know. So now the question is, how many steps can I get to that 11 foot mark, okay? All too often, students make the mistake of drawing to the ceiling level. Maybe the ceiling's down here and that's at Nine, foot, nine feet, whoops, let me get this on the sheet where you can see. All too often students draw from the floor to the ceiling level and maybe that foot, that ceiling level is nine feet six inches. Next thing you know you have a big foot and a half discrepancy here uh, to the floor level. So make sure you're drawing to the floor, floor to floor, okay? Floor to floor. You have to know that dimension that you're trying to get. And that's not the same depending on countries, depending on building standards, depending on what you happen to be working with, all right? So floor to floor, I'll use the back of this sheet. Floor to floor, 11 feet. I'm gonna switch to a, a pen that you can see a little bit better. We have an 11 foot height that we're trying to go. Now you need to make a choice. You need to make a determination of how high do you want your riser to be? Seven, eight, seven inches, eight inches, seven and a half, eight and a half. That's all, it doesn't matter too much. Just make a choice and pick a number that you can um, work with relatively easily. Um, in other words, you might want to divide eight inches into 11 feet. So I'm going to switch my calculator here. Uh, where did my calculator go? There it is. Um, the problem is we have an 8 inch rise, okay, individual rises, and we're trying to go 11 feet. You have to convert your units, you can't just go uh, divide that out. So the way I like to do this is I like to convert 11 feet to inches. If you can do that math in your head, that's great. If you can't, just go 11 inches times 12 inches per foot, that's 132 inches, okay, it's not magic. And then you divide that 8 inches into 132. So 132 divided by 8 is equal to, I didn't have to write that twice, but anyway, divided by 8 is equal to 16.5. What that means is we can get 16 and a half steps using an 8 inch module, okay? So I, at this point, just drop the remainder or round it off. So either 16 or or 17. You can't have a half step, okay? So round up or round down. Either way, it's not gonna make a difference. If we round down to 16, we wind up with a slightly larger than eight inch step for each step. If we round up to 17, then we came up with a slightly less than eight inch step, okay? Not a big deal. As far as our perspective drawing is concerned, nobody's gonna care. What we do care about is nice even increments that are converging and getting smaller and we're getting, um, um, proper foreshortening throughout the whole system. So what I have is, I'm gonna, let's just do 17 steps, okay? 17 steps. I should have done 16, less to draw. Oh well, 17 steps. And now what we need to know is our run length. So that's our rise, our total rise of steps. 
and now I need a run. The run is the total, remember the total length of the staircase. Remember that? Okay. So I need to know where I'm going to start this staircase in my floor plan. So I have 17 steps. And again, going back to our cheat sheet here of tread length, right? Total run is based on the number of treads or in each individual tread. Let's just use a number of, you could say 10.5 or 11, depends on what your space is. Let's use times 10.5, in other words, 10 and a half inches. So multiply that out, 17 times, oops, 17 times 10.5 is, oh, that didn't come out right. 17 times 10.5, I think I missed a decimal point there, equals 178.5 inches. Well, I don't want to map out inches in my perspective, so I divide that out by 12 again, and that's that is the same as 14.875 feet. So decimal conversion, 0.875 feet is 7 eighths of a foot. I'm just going to round that off to 3 quarters of a foot. That's a lot easier. So 14 feet and 3 quarters of a foot would be uh, 9 inches, right? So 14 feet, 9 inches. Some quick math, okay? So get good at your decimal values, at least in eighth inch increments, that will help with your rounding. You could also just round it off and just say 15 feet, okay? So some rough numbers there. Um, I share all that with you because you never know what your space has and what you're working with, right? So sometimes you don't have 15 feet to work with, you have only 14 feet to work with. Um, you're always going to remember, need to know that you need to have a landing as well. Going back to my diagram, I'm going to need to have a I believe it is three, uh, three feet at the top of the staircase and at the bottom of the staircase, okay? You're going to have to have a minimum of three feet. And that's for accessibility issues and, and safety uh, regulations and things like that. So you know, all too often people build their staircase right to a wall without any uh, landing area or same thing down at the bottom. They run the staircase right into a wall. Those aren't believable and they wind up looking terrible, okay? so. That's our staircase math. Um, let's get started at putting that in the perspective. So here's where I'm gonna put my, this is the wall. This is the floor level that I'm trying to get to. Down below here, I've sketched out what is about approximately a three foot wide staircase. So effectively, my staircase is going to occupy sort of this area of the drawing down here. I'm gonna go back to draw a vertical in here, and come out from my left vanishing point over here. And you can see where my lines are intersecting. Uh, I'm gonna shift, shift this over a little bit because of how it's lining up with the back edge of the room. So I'm gonna make it a little bit wider here. Just That's just an aesthetic choice, so it's not lining up with that back edge. And that's just for the video. So now my staircase is a little bit wider here. So out here is where my first step is going to be. Okay. And again, I've just eyeballed or I've, I've estimated in this case, I didn't say, I should have, shouldn't have said again, but uh, in this case, I'm estimating where the stairs case is starting in this, in, in this perspective. I know that I've got 17 feet from this edge to that back wall. And if I come out three feet, now I'm down to 14 feet. Make sense? So I'm just kind of eyeballing that at the moment. But All right, so we have a vertical height of the stair here. We're trying to get from the first step, which is going to be out here. And now I know that I need 17 steps to get from this, from this floor level here to that loft level up above. 17 steps. So you need division system. I'm going to zoom in on this. Okay, I'm going to zoom in on that line a little bit more so you can actually see it. You probably don't need my perspective vanishing point. You need a system to get from here to here, and I need to divide this line up into 17 equal units. So on my architectural scale, I'm going to use a red pencil again so you can see it a little bit better. Sorry for having my arm in the way. 
on my scale, my architectural scale is really nice because it's all equal divisions. So you don't have to get, don't worry about what scale. It doesn't matter. Eighth inch scale, quarter inch scale, uh, three thirty seconds inch scale. All what we're doing right now is we're looking for an equal division of units up to 17 that I can put very close to this line but not on this line. So in other words, if I use 330 seconds in scale vertically right here, boy, that's really close. I got lucky. I got really lucky. And it turns out from the vertical, from the floor level here to the 11 foot loft level I'm trying to get to, 17 winds up very evenly, equally in here. So I can just use my scale and I can make these little marks in here. Okay? I'm putting these marks on the vertical line. Now, I got really lucky today. That didn't that, that, that normally doesn't happen. Normally you have some odd dimension here and no even increments are going to fit in there. In which case you need to use a division system. So you choose a scale off to the side that feels kind of comfortable, that you can work with comfortably relating to this vertical line. I can't trust the perspective depth in any way, but vertically I can divide up any line I want. So let's say instead of that 3 seconds inch scale, let's just say I used 8 inch instead. What I would do is locate the base of the uh, vertical line that I'm trying to map to. Off to the side over here, I'm going to strike a line and there's 16, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. 1 is right there. It's a little confusing. Each of these increments over here, I'm going to map over to the vertical line. So I use two triangles together. Just plot where you're trying to get to, which is here, and that 17th inch, in 17th increment over here. Use another triangle, slide the, the, the one uh, along this other base triangle, okay? So you can slide that along, and you get parallel lines. So what you do is you go along this the diagonal line, and you carry those lines over to this vertical line where you're trying to get to, okay? And you'll see they're going to line up exactly where my, as it turned out, the 332 inch scale was able to divide it up evenly. But again, that will only happen once in a while. So, I mean, or rarely will. So, um, don't expect it. So, use this, this is our division system, dividing up a line. Now, you can do this anywhere in perspective on any vertical line. So, if you're product design and you want to divide up a vertical height of a cup or something like that, Find the vertical tangency that you can trust, or the center axis of the object that you can trust, and you can divide up that vertical height just as, as you need. So, the mechanics here make no difference whether we're doing interiors and architecture. Um, and I'm drawing all of this far more than I would actually do for my own personal drawing. I'm doing this for you guys at home so you can see um, how this division of line maps over to that vertical, okay? So now I have even divisions on this vertical, and that, what that tells me is that my first step height is right here. My second step height is right there. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen is right there at the loft level, okay? What does that mean? Now I can carry this first step the first step height on that blue line right there, out from my right vanishing point, outward in space over here, and it shows me in the foreground the height of the first step. Okay, so I'm going to flush that in a little bit darker than I normally would. I'm going to switch back to the blue. So the first step is right there. The opposite direction of the first step runs to the left vanishing point, so the first step carries across there. I am going to clean up my drawing here a little bit so you can see it. And then the first tread goes back to the right vanishing point. So I'm just building a little boxy plane right there. Now what I need to know is the slope of the van or the slope of the staircase. So going back to my little diagram sheet here. Back to my diagram sheet. The slope of the staircase, okay? And that is going to go to a uh, diagonal slope vanishing point. 
Now the stair treads, each step rise and tread underneath, that's also a parallel slope. Okay, so that's going to be a control line. And my system here gives you several, a couple of control lines to build your staircase. All right. I'm going to try and switch my colors again so that it helps you see it. So my first control line, so above the right vanishing point in this case, there's going to be a slope vanishing point up here. So off to, let me zoom out here a little bit. So off the right vanishing point, I draw a vertical line, and I know my staircase in this case is going to slope up and intersect that vertical line somewhere along here. Okay. I'll zoom out a touch further so you can see where that intersection becomes, and then I'll zoom back in um, as the staircase starts to emerge. So from this first step to the last step, just draw a straight line between those two. Try and keep my head out of the way of the camera here. Draw a straight line between those two where it intersected that vertical line. That's our slope vanishing point up there. Okay. The opposite side of the staircase. If I've done everything correctly here, this first step and that last step will also confirm that's our slope vanishing point. Now I'm going to put one more slope uh, line in here, and this is just for the diagram for you guys. The underside of the staircase, in other words, the bottom of the step, is also going to confirm. From here to the very last step, I'm going to draw that diagonal. Lead keeps breaking on me. That slope goes up to the slope vanishing point here too. So here's my slope VP. The slope for this staircase, okay, there's my right vanishing point, okay, there's my system. So the bottom line, going back to this little diagram that I've been working with, the bottom slope is this red line, let me use a pencil that's not going to break, okay, the bottom, the bottom of the steps is this red line, and I'm using a blue line for the slope here. Those are both parallel though, okay? And so therefore they use the same slope vanishing point. Okay? Now, uh, going back here, the bottom, bottom of the staircase to the slope vanishing point. That's the slope. And now I can, I have all the, the mechanical information I need in this perspective drawing to build out this particular staircase. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to zoom in so you can actually see the mechanics, the construction a little bit uh, tighter. All right. Okay, I hope that helps. And now, I know it might be a little bit blurry. And now I'm going to go back to my graphite pencil so you can see the stairs emerge and flush into this. So what I'm going to do is using these guidelines on the fore side of the, of the step, I'm going to start to carry each of these steps forward from the right vanishing point. So the first step was right there. The second step is right here. So you go from here through that point, right vanishing point through that point. And then the only part of that is I, I just put a little horizontal line right through there. So the third step to the right vanishing point. So I'm drawing a little horizontal line between the blue line and the red line, my slope. And these are my stair treads. And I just work my way up along the vertical, the vertical height of the step. Just keep working your way up, right vanishing point, through the fourth or fifth step, sixth step, whatever we're at right now. Don't worry about the column and the block that's blocking the view. We're just going to draw it right through the column. The thing about this system, if you notice, is right now we're on the horizon line. And if you use almost any other system I've ever seen, at the horizon line and near the horizon line, you're really stuck because you don't have a way of getting geometry through there. Um, everything's flat at the horizon line. So you, there's no mechanics. You can't build one step at a time. I see a lot of demonstrations or a lot of examples where from books and other videos and things and it's one step at a, at a time construction. And what happens is through the horizon line, you lose all your geometry. So there's all my stair treads going up just come back to the, with your triangle. Now, you're just going to simply draw verticals between the red line and the blue line. So there's a vertical, that's a riser. Over here there's a vertical. 
Over here there's a vertical. Right there there's the next vertical. And the other nice thing about this system, so it helps us get through the horizon line where, we, where all of our geometry flattens. We can build this staircase from the top down and from the bottom up. And the other thing is that if I have little errors in my construction here, it's not a big deal because I can just average out little, little discrepancies. Okay? And now I'm going to go off each one of these corners is the nose of the stair. So I just go back to the left vanishing point now. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw the nose. Oops. From the blue line to the blue line. And I can also go ahead and draw my red. The, the, nobody has a definition for this part. This is like where the, the vertical rise meets the tread, the red line. We don't really have a name for that. I've yet to find a definition for that edge, that inside corner. So I just go all the way through the drawing. I just keep building one line at a time, going from red to line to red line, or blue line to blue line, for the noses. And we just keep continuing up the staircase. So the nice thing about this is I can also start from the top, and I can work down, or I can work from the bottom up, whatever is more comfortable. As we get to the horizon line, you're no longer going to see the stair treads. And that's a mistake that students often make as well. So this system lets us realize, that's okay, I've got enough mechanics in here. And I don't need to build one step at a time. So when I can no longer see where the intersections are, it's not a problem. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute here. Just a second. All right, so we're getting higher and higher up. The, this nose is now just above the horizon line. It means I can no longer see the back corners. So I'm only just doing the noses now across the front. So the blue line to blue line, the intersection of the blue line to blue line. And this is your basic mechanics. So I know this video is um, now we're at about 37 minutes. We had to get through some basic structure mechanics and, and, and uh, fundamentals or f some backstory elements. Uh, Understanding slope geometry at least very 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 quickly and then don't be confused right there. There's another step. Okay now the Verticals come in Red red line to blue line red line to blue line red line to blue line and You can just average out if there's a little error in there. You just average out the discrepancy You see I break tips a lot too, but now we're at the horizon line all I have to do is draw the verticals in there's the vertical, 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 vertical. And all these verticals are against the wall. And then our treads come out from the right vanishing point against the wall. I'll make a little adjustment to my line weights, to my line structure. So corner to blue intersection to red intersection. And you only have to do this a few times until you get to the um, to where you can't draw the geometry anymore. So there's your staircase and we're practically done. I mean the, all the, the system is there. Um, if we go back to our vertical uh, red line back here, a one foot floor thickness would be there, two foot floor thickness would be there. I'll just carry that two foot increment out here to the blue line and then off of my red vanish my left vanishing point over there. So my floor thickness is more or less right there. So let's put a quick staircase handrail in here. Another set of uh, approximate numbers. I didn't have that outlined in the initial. But typically a handrail is, get this on the board where you can see it. Typically a handrail is 36 inches above the floor, okay? So, 36 inches. And that means it changes, it's different, it's shorter actually, it's something like 28 inches above each individual step. When you get to the top of the stairs, it's also 36 inches above the floor level, okay? So, how can I approximate that here? If I know that I used eight inch increments, approximately eight inch vertical rise increments, I can divide eight into 36, that'll go approximately four and a half times. That means, 
for every four and a half steps, I can just count one, two, three, four and a half, right? Four times eight is 32 plus another four, that's 36. Okay, so basic, basic arithmetic. So I can count steps, one, two, three, four and a half is right there. So I come out from my right vanishing point, right vanishing point through there, out here in the foreground, that's 36 inches. I can now use my slope vanishing point. The handrail is going to go up the stairs following the slope vanishing point. When I get to the top of the stairs, it's right there. And now I can come back out from my left vanishing point along the balcony. And that's where my glass is. So I'm just going to sketch that in. Some quick little glare effect for glass and the railing, the handrail in the foreground. Now sometimes I like to put in some vertical breaks that helps you start to see or articulate the, uh, like the glass edges. And I'm just eyeballing them at the moment. I would spend more time and make them a little bit more even. Here in the foreground, uh, maybe I'll just count every two or three or four steps or something. So there's a, a seam between the glass, one, two, three, there's a seam between the glass. So I'm just lining them up with the steps now. One, two, three. And uh, one, two, three. And one, two, three. And maybe have a little leftover piece here at the end. It's not so ideal. All right. So now I have glass right here. Well, it's shifted at an angle so it's not confusing you with the steps themselves. Um, I like to often draw my glass edges a little bit stronger um, when you're doing light logic and things. It's usually the edge of the glass, just like this triangle in fact, just like this triangle. We see the edge of the triangle far more than we actually see the, the tint, uh, the tinted plane in this case. So you're off to a pretty good start if you focus on the edge dynamics of glass rather than over rendering it, over drawing it. So that's our staircase construction and mechanics uh, very, very, very quickly. I'll try and do a couple more videos soon for you guys. So um, using the same system and applying it in just various and different ways. But um, hopefully that helps. That's, uh, again, a system that will let you go um, very believably from floor to floor. And don't get confused by where your vertical... Uh, your ceiling plane is in this case. So our ceiling is underneath this vertical plane right here. That's a soffit level, a soffit plane. And I'm just going to flush in. Flush in a ceiling plane in here really, really quickly. There's our ceiling plane right there. So I'm working off of the back wall of the room. It's disappearing behind the stairs right there, but that's our ceiling plane underneath there. I'm rendering it in a little bit darker just so you can see it. If you have columns and things like that in the foreground, I will zoom out here a little bit. So you can see there's a couple columns in the foreground. One old school method is that you, you show us where the base of the columns are, and you can let that drawing fade up and out of the way. The same thing here, maybe there's a kitchen underneath this loft and I want to focus in our, our attention on that kitchen. Then I might render only just a little bit of the base of these columns and then fade that qual that, um, that texture or off, uh, that detail of the column off. Um, same thing even up here at the, at the ceiling. So it really depends on what you're trying to communicate. But um, I'm just flushing in very quickly so you can see the columns. I know you can't see this one, so I'm off the screen a little bit here. Um, but it all depends on what you're trying to show. Sometimes you want to focus on the staircase. It's an asset. It's a feature. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. You don't want the columns to block your view of that. You can draw right through. Okay, so a little bit of transparency is uh, can be a really nice style, um, a stylistic approach. All right, I hope that helps. Um, again, our systems, just a reminder, the things you're going to need to get familiar with and pretty good at. You're going to need to know your staircase. Oops, let me come down here. You're going to need to know staircase terms and definitions and have some rough dimensions that you're trying to work around with in terms of your 
stair tread height and your or stair tread length and the stair rise height. You're going to need to understand sloped planes in perspective. In other words, using a sloped vanishing point, and that sloped vanishing point will be can be above the horizon line. It can also be below the horizon line, depending on which way you're going. So. Um, Going back to our diagram here on our trace paper, let me give, give you, actually I'll just do this on this bond paper right here. So, slope vanishing points, again, you could have a slope that rises above our heads um, in this direction, okay? So, this may be just the perspective box at the moment, right? This is our basic perspective system. For an object up above our heads or a loft up above our heads, it makes no difference what it is. Um, and now, if I need to create a slope off of that, the slope, let me switch to color. We may have a staircase or something rising up over our head in this direction. See? So we would have, in this case, a slope vanishing point down here. Okay? And if you spend the time with grids enough, you'll see that those mechanics come out for you. Okay? So that's your control mechanism, is your slope. So even off of this little diagram, I can start to build um, a little perspective. And I can see where we are in that perspective. Okay, I hope this helps. I know it's pretty fast. Um, it's the only method I've ever used over the years that actually produces good results and nice even distribution of the stairs and compensates for little discrepancies in your pencil ship or um, when you don't use the division super smoothly or perfectly, this allows you to balance out any little flaws and errors, distribute it out over the steps, um, of course, across the whole drawing. I hope this helps, and um, I'll leave you with that image. All the best. Bye.